the real reason why so many Christians will be left behind at the rapture. In the great assembly of believers, in this vast sea of Christianity, a deeply unsettling reality casts its shadow upon the church. I have often found myself reflecting on the words of the Apostle Paul, recorded in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. What a glorious promise! What an astonishing hope! Yet, I fear, many who count themselves among the faithful will be sorely disappointed on that fateful day. Now, you might ask, Preacher, why would any Christian be left behind at the rapture? To that, I answer with a heavy heart. It's because, though they claim to know him, Jesus Christ does not know them. It's not about simply knowing of him, folks. It's about having an intimate, personal relationship with our Savior, the living Lord Jesus Christ. Pew Research Center reported in 2021 that about 65% of American adults described themselves as Christians when asked about their religion. This was down from 77% in 2009. Now I want you to ask yourself, do you really think this is accurate? Do you really think 65% of Americans are Christians according to the parameters set by the Holy Bible? Or do you think that within that 65%, a large number of those are Christians according to the parameters of the world and not the Bible? There is counterfeit Christianity in our generation, counterfeit Christianity who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. My point is this, there are people who describe themselves as Christian, but Jesus Christ does not know them. Therefore, when Christ comes to collect his church at the rapture, they will be left behind, for Christ does not know them. They will be left behind. We've filled our churches to the brim. We've got our rituals and our traditions, our song services and our prayer meetings. Yet, there's an emptiness in many a pew, a vacancy that isn't about a lack of bodies but a lack of genuine connection to Christ. You see, it's not about the number of times you've set foot in a church or the countless verses you've memorized. No, it's about knowing Christ in the depths of your soul and being known by him. Now, I want to be clear, the rapture won't be executed by some angel with a checklist, nor a messenger cross-referencing names with the church registry. No, the Bible says, the Lord himself will descend. Jesus, the King of Kings, will come down personally to collect his saints. Why? Because he knows those who belong to him. He knows his sheep, and his sheep know his voice. Jesus knows those that truly belong to him. If you are truly saved, you do not have any need to be scared about whether you will make the rapture or not. Christ will by himself rapture you out on that day when he shall call up his saints. He knows every one of us that belongs to him by name. He is our shepherd, and we are the sheep of his pasture. When the trumpet shall sound at rapture, none of the saints will be left behind. We are not going to be caught up by our own strength, but by the Spirit of Him that raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be quickened to rise above the skies. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 says, Nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ said that it is not all that call him Lord that will enter into the kingdom of God but those that do the will of his Father. So, Christ knows those who call him Lord with their mouths but have their hearts far away from him, and he also knows those that call and serve him from a pure heart. The question we should all ask ourselves is, Am I really serving God, or am I deceiving myself? All those who call on the name of the Lord are to depart from iniquity. Once you are serving God with purity of heart, you can be sure that Christ will find you at rapture. The rapture will be selective. Only those who Christ has in his register are going to be caught up. The church may have your name in her record, but does Christ have you in his register? What matters most is that Christ should recognize you. If you are not recognized by Christ, you cannot make the rapture. But if you have been serving the Lord faithfully, there is nothing to fear, you are prepared for the rapture, and up you'd go when the trumpet sounds.
watch and pray. Mark 13 verse 33 reads, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. It is not enough to go to church or to attend a prayer meeting. You must examine whether your passion for the Lord is growing or declining. The love of many is already waxing cold. Deep down, many of us know that we are not prepared for rapture because a lot of things have taken away our passion for the Lord. Activities have taken the place of true fellowship with the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Brethren, we all need to examine ourselves and judge ourselves before anyone else does. Right now, how can you define your walk with God? Are you still consistent with Him? Unfortunately, there are many of us that are battling with secret sin, but we die in silence rather than cry out for help. Some may ask, How can we ensure Christ knows us? It begins with genuine repentance and faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. When we recognize our sinful nature and turn away from our sins, placing our trust in Christ alone for salvation, a transformative process begins. Romans 10 verse 9 states, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It is an intimate relationship birthed out of sincerity and humility. Christ warned in Matthew 7 verses 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is a stark reminder that mere religious activity, or even mighty works in his name, are not indicators of genuine faith. It's not about the volume of our religious deeds, but about the genuineness of our relationship with him. It's about a heart transformation, which results in a life that is in harmony with God's will. The Christian journey is akin to building a deep, meaningful relationship. Think of your closest friends and family. Why are these relationships so deep? It's not merely because of the time spent together or the things done for one another. Rather, it's about understanding, trust, commitment, and love. Just as in any true relationship, knowing Christ requires open communication, which we find through prayer. It requires seeking understanding, which we gain through studying His Word. And most critically, it requires a heart willing to be molded and transformed by the Holy Spirit. Consider the parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins in Matthew 25. All were awaiting the bridegroom, but only half were prepared when he came. Those who were unprepared found themselves shut out, with the heartbreaking response. Truly, I tell you, I don't know you. This underscores the vital importance of not just waiting, but waiting in preparedness, in relationship, and in intimacy with Christ. So, my friends, I want to echo Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Is your faith genuine? Is it rooted in a personal relationship with Christ, or is it merely a ritualistic, surface-level claim? When our hearts are anchored in Christ, there's a sense of peace that transcends understanding. A peace that stands firm even in the face of tribulations, knowing that our Savior holds us close. And as the world around us seems to spiral, as the days darken, this peace becomes our guiding light. The will of God will not take us where the grace of God cannot sustain us. Do not fear the rapture, or any event of the end times for that matter. Fear, after all, is not from God. Instead, let these truths inspire you to draw nearer to Christ, to lean into His Word, His promises, and His love. The call isn't to live in a state of paranoia or anxiousness, but to live with purpose, passion, and preparedness. Love Christ deeply, know Him intimately, and trust Him wholly. Love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. When you do this, not only will you find that Christ indeed knows you, but you will also find yourself enveloped in his overwhelming love and grace. And that love casts out all fear. For if God is for us, 
who can be against us? In conclusion, while the concept of the rapture and the events surrounding it can be daunting, our focus should not be on fear, but on fostering our relationship with Jesus Christ. A heart truly submitted to him will be ready, come what may. Let the love of Christ be your guiding light, leading you into deeper fellowship with him each day. And when that trumpet sounds, when the call is made, may we all be found ready, not because of our works, but because of our deep-rooted, personal relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ.